Good morning, children. We are here to study English literature, chapter 5, Peter and Ben. I have already sent the PDF file of exercises to you, children. Copy down everything neatly and beautifully in your copy. And also in very good handwriting. Children, Please read a story every day before going to bed. This will increase your vocabulary and also your speaking skills. So now, let's open the book and study Peter and Wendy. Sir James Matthew Berry has written Peter Pan. He was a Scottish novelist and playwright. He started writing stories like Peter Pan or The Boy Who Wouldn't Grow Up while making up stories about adventures with pirates and sailing to different islands to entertain children. So he was basically a writer who wrote for children and he was more interested in writing about Pirates, mermaids, fairies, etc. These are things about mythology. Means, like we believe it, there is. But actually, is it there or not? We do not know. So now, let's start the chapter, children. Peter Pan was a mischievous young boy who spent his never-ending childhood on the faraway magical island of Neverland with fairies, pirates and mermaids. So, here Peter Pan is a naughty boy, who spent his childhood days in the magical island of Neverland. Neverland is an imaginary island where Peter Pan, Tinkerbell, fairies mermaids and some other mythical creatures and beings live. He occasionally visited ordinary children too. One night, as Peter listened to Mrs. Darling read bedtime stories to her children, Wendy, John and Michael, Nana their dog entered and sprung at Peter. Peter escaped, but his shadow got behind him. So children, he occasionally used to visit ordinary children too. One night, when he was listen, listening to Mrs. Darling, read story to Wendy, John and Michael, their dog Nana entered and jumped at Peter. So he tried to escape. While escaping, he left his shadow behind. Is it not funny, children? Can anyone leave their shadow? Let's read a story that describes how a few days later, Peter waited till the children were asleep. And then entered with the fairy Tinkerbell to find his shadow. So let us read the story that describes how Peter came back with Tinkerbell after a few days. And waits till the children sleeps to find his shadow. The night lights by the bed of the three children went out one by one. There was another light in the room now, a thousand times brighter than the night lights, going in and out of all the drawers in the nursery, looking for Peter's shadow, rummaging the wardrobe and turning every pocket inside out. So, we see that after the children had gone to sleep, their bed lights went off one by one. But 
there was another very bright light in the room, which was going in and out of all the drawers in the children's room. And that light was searching for Peter's shadow, throwing all the things in the drawer inside out. It was not really a light. It was made this light by flashing about so quickly. But when it came to rest for a second, you saw it was a fairy. No longer than your hand, but still growing. It was a girl called Tinkerbell, dressed in a leaf gown. So children, it was not really a light. When it rested for a second, we saw it was a fairy, not longer than your hand. That is your palm. It was still growing. It was a girl called Tinkerbell, dressed in a leaf gown. You can see in the picture the image of Tinkerbell. A moment after the fairy's entrance, the window was blown open by the breathing of the little stars and Peter dropped in. He had carried Tinkerbell part of the way and his hand was still messy with the fairy dust. So a moment after the fairy's entrance, Peter dropped inside the room through the window chasing Tinkerbell. His hand was dirty with the magical powder that the fairies have. Why? Because on the way he had he caught Tinkerbell. So children, he entered the room in search of the shadow. So she was in a jug for the moment and liking it extremely. She had never been in a jug before. Oh, do come out of that jug and tell me. Do you know where they put my shadow? The loveliest tinker as of golden bells answered him. It is the fairy language. You ordinary children can never hear it. But if you were to hear it, you would know that you had heard it once before. So children, she was in a jug and she was liking it as she had never been in a jug before. Then Peter says, now come out of the jug and tell me where they have put my shadow. We cannot hear Tingle because she is a fairy. She speaks in such a sweet different voice that it is difficult for us to here. But if you could hear, you will realize you have heard it before. Ting said that the shadow was in the big box. She meant the chest of drawers. And Peter jumped at the drawers, scattering their contents to the floor with both hands. In a moment, he had recovered his shadow. And his Delight, he forgot that he had shut Tinkerbell up in the drawer. So you know children, Tinker said his shadow was in the big box. And Peter jumped at the drawers, throwing all the things inside out. And soon he received his shadow. But he was so happy that unknowingly he shut Tinkerbell in the draw. If he thought at all, but I don't believe he ever thought, it was that he and his shadow, when brought near each other, would join like drops of water. And when they did not, he was surprised. He tried to stick it on with soap from the bathroom. But that also failed. 
a shudder passed through Peter, and he sat on the floor and cried. His sobs woke up Wendy, and she sat up in bed. She was not alarmed to see a stranger crying on the nursery floor. She was only pleasantly interested. So you know, children, what Peter thought? He thought when he will place the shadow near him, it will join like the drops of water. But it did not happen. So he was surprised. Now, why was he surprised? He tried to stick the shadow with the soap. Now, can we be able to stick something with soap? We rather use soap to take off something like ring or bangle that gets stuck into our hand. So, can we be able to stick something? No, it will slip away. A shudder means he could not understand what is happening. So he sat on the floor and started crying. Now, when Peter was crying, his cry woke up Wendy. Now, Wendy was not surprised to see a stranger sitting on the floor and crying. Rather, she was interested to know who he was and why he was here. Boy, she said kindly, why are you crying? Peter, having learned the grand manner at fairy ceremonies, rose and bowed to her beautifully. She was much pleased and bowed beautifully to him from bed. So, she asked Peter, who asked? Wendy asked Peter, very kindly, why was he crying? Peter got up and bowed to her beautifully, which she liked. And she also bowed him back beautifully from the bed. What's your name? He asked. Wendy, Moira, Angela, darling. She replied, what's your name? Peter Pan. It did seem a comparatively short name. So, Wendy, Moira, Angela, darling, it is four words. It has four words. Yes, it is a longer name in comparison to Peter Pan. Is it all? Yes, he said rather sharply. He felt for the first time that it was a short name. I'm sorry, said Wendy, Moira, Angela. It doesn't matter, Peter replied. She asked where he lived. Second to the right and Peter said Peter and then straight on till morning. What a funny address. Isn't it children? Of course it is a funny address. It doesn't have a number as we live in a particular place. It has a number, name of the society, the building, the name of the place or city like Dhanbad, Bokaro, etc. But what address he is giving is second to the right and straight on till the morning. So because he comes from a place where fairies live, so doesn't have a specific address. So Wendy is laughing and say, it is a funny address, isn't it? Peter had a sinking feeling. For the first time, he felt that perhaps it was a funny address. No, it isn't, he said. Then Wendy saw the shadow on the floor, looking so draggled. And she felt sorry for Peter. How awful, she said. But she could not help smiling. When she saw that, he had been trying to stick it on with soap. So Peter felt very sad, children, and embarrassed. And for the first time, he felt it was a funny address. 
no it isn't then when they saw that the shadow was on the floor and was draggled means it was so dirty wet because he was putting soap onto it in order to stick the shadow to himself and so she felt felt very sorry for peter fortunately she knew at once what to do it must be sewn on she said i shall sew it on for you she said and sewed the shadow on to peter's foot so isn't it funny first of all it is getting lost second of all she has to stitch the shadow on to the foot of peter pan and she is telling it is going to hurt you if i stitch it on to your foot i dare say it will hurt a little she warned him oh i should cry said peter who was already of opinion that he had never cried in his life and he clenched his teeth and did not cry and soon his shadow was behaving properly so he was very confident that he was not going to cry but when wendy is stitching the shadow he clenched his teeth means made a sound by pressing both his jaws tightly and don't want to cry and he didn't cry and soon his shadow was behaving properly peter was not jumping about in the wildest glee alas he had already forgotten that wendy was the one who attached his shadow he thought he had attached the shadow himself how clever i am he crowned oh the cleverness of me so now he so ungrateful that he forgot that it was wendy who had stitched his shadow to his body but what to do we see that he say i am so clever that i have stitched the shadow to myself children you can see in the picture that wendy is stitching the shadow onto his body wendy was shocked you conceited boy she exclaimed with sarcasm of course i did nothing you did a little peter said carelessly and continued to dance a little she exclaimed and she sprang into bed and covered her face with the blankets with the blanket you conceited boy means extremely proud boy he was not at all grateful towards wendy that she has stitched the shadow wendy was offended with his behavior she says you conceited boy he was not bothered at all what wendy was saying and continued to enjoy and dance and he had forgotten about tinkerbell that she has been closed by him inside the drawer wendy felt bad so she jumped onto the bed and covered herself with the blanket 